So you made it to Fountainhead Palace. You rode the big ropey boy on over here, but now there's the true monk. And he has three health bars, and he makes shadow clones, and he's throwing snakes in your face. And that's a whole lot of bullshit, and you're not sure if you can beat it. But that's okay, that's why you're here. And we're gonna get through this together. Welcome to the Get Good Guide for the True Monk. So before we jump into this fight, let's talk about the loadout we're gonna want. Now if you're gonna be following this guide and going for the Get Good approach, I would suggest having the highest tier flame vent that you have available. You can certainly get by with the spring loaded flame vent or even the base flame vent if that's all you have, but having access to Okinagas is going to be nice in this fight. In addition to that, to make sure you can ignite the boss, you're going to want to be drenching him with oil before you use your flame vent. Because he has terror build up in phase 3, you should have either a model purple gourd on or alternatively pacifying agents to make sure you can shut that shit down. And lastly, if you're going to go for the cheese strat, you're going to want long spark and then in addition to that, you'll want to run either a gotchen sugar or a Goshen Spirit Fall to get the death blow in phase one. As for our combat art, we're gonna be using High Monk, although this will only be used for the phase three sweep for posture buildup. So the first thing I wanna mention is the cheese strat for those that are absolutely stuck and cannot get past this guy. You can use either a Goshen Sugar or a Goshen Spirit Fall to get higher stealth. You don't have to do this, but it's gonna help a lot to get a phase one death blow. After you've popped that, jump up to this tree and then jump up to the highest tree. Turn around, lock on, jump, and get a free death blow. From there, you literally repeat the same exact thing for Phase 2. As I mentioned, you can do this without a gotcha and Sugar, but it just makes it that much easier, so you might as well if you're having trouble. After eliminating the first two phases, the third phase is very similar to how we fought the Corrupted Monk before. Firecracker, spam R1. You can get four hits in before you have to throw Firecracker again, and you can do this for the entirety of the phase. We're not going to be actually doing this strategy this time around, but I wanted to showcase it for those stuck. As for his perilous attacks, there's a perilous thrust, and you can always counter this by hitting Makiri when you see the shine on the blade. Moving on from there, he also has a perilous sweep, which you should aim to jump and bounce off his head during. And you want to make sure to bounce when you see this particular attack and not use High Monk. The main reason for that is it's actually a follow-up attack, and you notice if you try to use High Monk, the second hit will catch you. When Phase 2 starts, he channels his inner weeb and begins making shadow clones. To deal with this, if you're not going to get a death blow, the best bet is going to be to just jump around on these trees. And honestly, I think that's why they're here. Now, as I mentioned back at the start, you can just hop up to this high branch that we were just on and get a death blow right at the start of this phase. And while I do recommend doing that, because this is a good guide, and in the previous monk video we just cheesed the shit out of him, I decided to show the harder way to take him down. Once he's done with his shadow clones, you can jump on down, and this phase continues pretty much identical to Phase 1. As Phase 3 begins, he gains a couple of new abilities, the first one being Terror Snakes. Catching a full load of snakes to the face will kill you just via Terror Buildup alone. Because of this, one of the best things to do is going to be just avoiding them by circling behind and lighting his ass on fire. As for his sweeps, they also get mixed up a little bit. You can jump on over the sleep and get double hits in, and he likes to do snakes afterwards, giving you that opportunity to use fire. It's also important to note that you should dodge this sweep with a jump, because trying to use High Monk will just get you a face full of snakes. He also has a long range variation of his perilous sweep, and while once again you can jump and bounce off the head for bonus posture damage, you can actually safely use High Monk during this one to get super posture damage in. Lastly, he has a retreating perilous sweep, but honestly, this one should basically never hit you as long as you're deflected. I'd also like to touch on his Beyblade attack. While you can deflect all of these, as you saw right there, it's easy to just walk behind him and then light his ass on fire when he's done spinning. Now that we've covered everything, it's time to take this bad boy down. So, for the first two phases, I'm um, pretty much just going to stay on him, deflect as we can, and get in damage. We're not going to need to use our prosthetic arts at all, not going to need to use our combat arts. As you can see, he doesn't have a super posture like the ghostly monk did. And just staying on him, and his posture is building up very fast. If you're worried about posture, you can always hit him with a, uh, a shuriken. I'll actually switch to uh, Phantom Kunai or something, just because somebody will be like, I don't have Lazulite. You can see we're not even really doing much here. We're literally just popping Makiri when we need to pop Makiri, deflecting when we need to deflect. As I mentioned, if you're not going to go for the death blow, just start joping around. 
If you want to go for the death blow, you can get it right here. Otherwise, time to hop between some trees. You can see, you don't want to just stay in a tree, because they will get your ass. You can see the uh, black shadow slashes that are coming around. If you get hit, back up considerably before you heal. If you try to heal in his face, you're obviously going to get bonked on. But other than that, as I mentioned, this is basically identical to Phase 1. Likes doing a stab, which of course is easy to counter. Alright, now for Phase 2, or excuse me, Phase 3, he's not going to immediately get up. The centipede will pop out, give it a second, and then hit him with the oil. If you have Living Force upgrade, of course, pull out that fire sword just to make it badass. You can see, when you jump there, even though he, uh, he does the snakes, you can avoid it. As a reminder, after you light him, Get ready to re-oil him. You can see the fire is getting good, good damage in here, and it's interrupting him. Once again, time for some more oil. You can see just using the third flame vent. Look at his health already. We are just absolutely cooking this guy. If you need more usage, um, keep in mind you can of course use the uh, use the Tonto to get yourself some extra usage of the flame vent if you have less emblems. One thing to keep in mind, which I haven't mentioned, you can actually jump off this bridge, so just be aware of that. You don't want to accidentally jump off the bridge while you're trying to dodge something. And that's pretty much it. From here, he'll just finish burning down. I felt bad for him, so let him hit me in the face. Of course, pull out that mortal blade. Centipede be gone! And with the immortality severed, you have now gotten past the true monk. So, hopefully after following this guide, you guys also made it into the Get Good Club. As I mentioned in the last video, and in most of the videos, I'll also have a link down in the comment section to the walkthrough episode as this is New Game Plus, and somebody will inevitably pout that they don't have this much health. But once again, it doesn't matter. Get good. It's all about paying attention, not having excuses. Anyway, stay tuned. We'll see you guys soon enough with Sword Saint and Demon of Hatred.